So did this come out to be a real or a virtual image? It's a real image. Now let's review how to decide whether something's real or virtual. We have two different definitions of real and virtual. One definition is a real image is on the same side as the outgoing light, and a virtual image is on the opposite side to the outgoing light. A real is on okay, the I'm same sorry. side. Uh, yeah. This applies when the op we're talking where the position of the object is. Uh, yeah, that's an important point. So this chart here, this chart tells you when you put the object in this position. All right. It predicts the image, but this uh, we're not we're, we shouldn't. These are not the positions of the images; they're the positions of the object. Okay. That's right. Okay. In this case, for example, we have an object that's inside the focal length. Okay. All right. So all of these points here are referring to where you're putting the object, okay. not where the image comes out. All right. Well, let's try again. Is this a real or a virtual image? Remember that a real image. So it's, a, it's a real or it's a virtual because it's on the opposite side of the outgoing light. The outgoing light is on the right, but the image is on the left. So that would make this virtual. We have another definition of a virtual image um, and real. Remember, a real image is where the outgoing light rays converge, and a virtual image is where their tracebacks converge. So the very fact that we had to use tracebacks tells us it's a virtual image. Now, like I said, if you're, not, if you're in a hurry and you're not using a straight edge, it might not be really obvious whether these rays would converge or not. So how can you tell whether, a lot of people might try to make them converge, you know, by bending them. So how do you know whether you should do that or not? Well, this is where it comes in so handy that we already have predicted what the answer would be up front. The chart tells us up front whether we're going to get a real or virtual. We already knew the object was within the focal point, so we already knew for sure we were going to get a virtual image. So we already knew ahead of time, before we did any pictures or any calculations, did we know that the image would be where the outgoing light rays converged, or would it be where their tracebacks converged? Which one? Once we know this is virtual, do we know that the image is where the outgoing light converges or where the traceback converges? Uh, the traceback. Right. And that would uh, tell us that, yes, just as it appears in the picture, these rays are not supposed to converge over here. It's their tracebacks. They're supposed to converge. So this is one of the best reasons to always get a prediction from the chart ahead of time. Because the ray tracing would give you the right answer if you were drawing everything to scale with a straight edge. But if the drawing is sloppy, it might not actually give you, you might not be able to tell whether these converge or not. So we knew ahead of time, as soon as we see this, we know, aha, we're going to have to use the tracebacks to find the image. As soon as we draw this, we know we'll need the tracebacks to find the image. The image is located where the outgoing light rays converge if it's real, or where the tracebacks converge <coughs> if it's virtual. Uh, so here it was where. Uh, the uh, tracebacks converge, and we would we knew that we had to do the tracebacks from the beginning because we knew it would be virtual. By the way, just looking at the picture, does this look like it is upright or inverted? Um, it's upright because it's the same orientation as the object. And does it look magnified or shrunk? The image is magnified because this arrow is bigger than this one, and that all matches up to our prediction. Okay, so in fact, we've kind of proven this part of the chart using ray tracing. We've proven, uh, or proven this part of the chart using ray tracing uh, over here. Okay, um, so everything here um, is uh, as we had predicted. By the way, when did we calculate the magnification was in the previous part of the problem? 3.5 3, uh, 3 So we th saw that the magnification was approximately 4, right? Correct. I haven't mentioned it before, but what this means is that the image should be four times bigger than the object. Magnification has a very straightforward interpretation. If the magnification is four, it should be four times bigger than the object. So you can see I'm not really drawing to scale because this didn't come out four times as big. So again, unfortunately, unless you're really using a mirror and measuring out all the distances, you might not get a perfect uh, answer here. This really should have come out four times bigger than this if I was really drawing the great picture. Well, this is where the algebra comes in. The algebra can give you a precise answer that is hard to get from your ray tracing diagram. Okay, um, but by the way, we, uh, we should know that interpretation. <coughs> An M of four means the image is four times bigger than the object. So by the way, um, well, I'll come back to that in a second. All right, so now we've really seen how to do lens mirror problems. The first thing to do with the lens mirror problem is use the chart to make a prediction. Um, and then something else you can do is you can use your equations. You can use your equations to get quantitative answers. And something else you can do is you can draw ray tracing diagrams to get qualitative predictions. 
Now, really, the ray tracing diagram is, is kind of superfluous because it's never going to be more accurate than the chart. The only real reason to know how to do this is because your instructor is going to ask you about this. Since instructors ask for ray tracing diagrams, you need to know how to do this. But it's actually more uh, accurate to use the chart because, again, the chart always gives the right answer, whereas this might be misleading if you're not drawing things to scale. But you have to do the best that you can. But it's good to try to practice these uh, all on as many different problems as we can. Okay. All right, so this was our first example of uh, ray tracing. By the way, if you look at the handout, I actually gave the instructions for three rays. I also showed how to do the F ray for ray tracing on page two. Ray tracing at the top, top page two. We also showed how to do the F ray. Mm -hmm. But we didn't bother going through that here because if you think about it, you only ever need two rays. The image is where the rays converge. Well, if you draw two rays, you can see where they converge. If I drew the F ray, it should, it should converge in the same place, but it wouldn't give us any new information. Um, the reason I, uh, so generally speaking, the P and the M rays are easiest. So usually you're not going to draw the F ray. The only reason I put that in the handout is sometimes the instructor might actually specifically ask you about the F ray. Uh, we won't get to that today, though, because that's less important. So for solving problems, if the, unless the instructor asks about it, we can stick to the P and the M rays over here. Okay, why don't we uh, think a little bit about how to interpret magnification then. So remember, this means that the image is four times bigger than the object. So what would this tell us? Seven times um, bigger than the object and it's upright. Good, that's right, seven times bigger than the object. Great. So what would this tell us? That it's six times larger than the object and it's inverted. Yeah, and who's it? The image. This tells us the image is six times bigger than the object um, and uh, it's inverted. What's this tell us? That the image is a third Good. smaller than the object. It's one third the size of the object is the best way to put it. It's one third the size of the object and it's upright. So if the object is 12 meters tall, what would be the height of the image in this case? One third is big. That's right. So we haven't talked about this deeper meaning of the magnification, but this is good to know. Um, the image height, and these are good symbols for the height of the object and the height of the image. Uh, your book might use different symbols, but these are good symbols for the height of the object and the height of the image. So this would tell us um, that uh, this is one third as tall as this. Or if we have how would we interpret this? Good. Now, expressing that a little more clearly, we want to say the image is one quarter the size of the object. So suppose that the object is uh, 20 meters high. How high would the image be? Five. Right. And here we're just focusing on magnitudes because there's some complications about the signs here that might not be important. But anyway, this is how do we interpret these uh, magnifications here. So it actually tells you directly um, what the factor of difference is between the image and the object. So that's uh, going to be important for us to, uh, to know about. Okay, well, let's take a look at some other problems. Here. 